Hello, here is part 11 where we're going to uh, mess around with the landing gear a little bit. Uh, my name is Brian Rocks and we are going to be using the uh, subdivision surface modifier on a couple of pieces, um, mainly just the joint and uh, the, the landing pad itself. Um, now you see I already mocked up kind of a crude positioning of um, the uh, landing gear and I use this front bring up layer one here you can see I just use this front piece here because um, the back landing gear are just basically rotated like 40 degrees or something and so we're just easier to model the one up one of them up front here uh, on a lateral plane and then duplicate it and then position it uh, on the back side there after you have it all rigged up and everything so let's go back to layer three and now with the subdivision modifier it allows you to do uh, some complex modeling but only say if we were to want to make a complex shape out of this we'd you know say subdivided a bunch of times and, you know model all your detail and everything um, but with the subdivision surface modifier you can get you know nice smooth uh, lines and contours you know rarely relatively easily by using just the base mesh as the uh, control cage basically so I'm gonna start with just this bottom piece here I'm gonna mo just move that out to uh, layer 4 now the, the modifier tab and just down in the modifiers under generate is subdivision surface and you can see that it um, subdivided the model and uh, rounded it off but that's in just the object mode if you were hit uh, tab and go into edit mode you can see the original um, model is, is still there actually this is the inside and um, what you see there the shaded portion is just the representation of this modifier so if you were to just turn that off with the little eyeball there you can see you have your um, mesh that doesn't have any um, changes done to it. It's not until you apply this so I'm going to go ahead and apply this uh, modifier and in tab in edit mode you see that you have your new um, mesh there. So go ahead and undo that. Okay now you see since it brought it down inside the the cage there a, a good amount um, and we still want to maintain this basic shape, but you know, with rounded corners and um, whatnot. There are a couple ways you can do that. If you were to like select, uh, just say select all the vertices here, and on the transform panel on your 3D window, you have this uh, mean crease setting. If you were to increase this, you can see that the it, at at one, it is basically the same shape as the original uh, model, and if you, as you bring it down, you can see that the uh, crease weight uh, lessens. Um, you have a little more control with the the modeling by doing it this next way. Um, we just use our loop cuts. Just go ahead and just loop cut and. I'm going to say bring it, you know, bring it out almost to the edge. And you can see it flattened it up uh, quite a bit. Let's go ahead and do this on this plane here. I'm going to control E. I'm going to edge slide that a little bit. And I'm going to actually apply the smooth shading here. And I'm going to throw an edge split. And you can see the changes with that edge split modifier, which I might just go ahead and take off of there. And I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, smooth shading off. So you can actually see the facets that way. Um, now I want to square this out a little more, so I'm going to just go ahead and do a couple more loop cuts here. Bring one up on that edge. And
and I can see we're almost back to um, where we started there and you can see we're off because we didn't do the loop cuts on the other side because um, I could have mirrored half of that to remedy that but I'll just throw these loop cuts in just so we're even and that'll do it and now you can see you can um, you know, modify all this by only using just the original control points instead of um, all these extras that would be uh, placed when you apply the modifier. Now to get like a more subdivided surface this view will give you you can see it just changed there. Yeah, it just subdivides it according to the number here. So one subdivision, two, three, and then you, you get the a lot smoother um, corners and angles out of that. And this render tab here determines how many levels of subdivision will be rendered. Um, so if you're working with uh, three in the view and you render it at two, it's going to render this style here. Um, now three and four are really detailed. It's just when you go to apply this mesh you're going to have all all of these um, loops and vertices and everything and you're going to have to clean it's like along this straight edge you can clean all these up you take all those out you can probably take you know a few of these um, ones along this um, flat edge here too and so you always want to keep that in mind when you're working with a division modifier like that because just how much do you actually want to clean up <laughs> and uh, how much detail you want so you're going to balance that out now on the whoops I'm going to actually re undo that and you can actually go about you know detailing all this I'm going to actually just scale that down and maybe you could, you know, put another loop cut in here. Scale that out like that. Do a little edge slide. Whoops. Scale that in. And you can get some, you know, it's fairly organic. Um, great for organic shapes. But also gives you... Um, pretty good um, control for like you know if you wanted some different kind of paneling or covers when it comes to industrial stuff so that's that on a, on a cube so on the whoops Let's go back to layer 3 here now on this here you can we'll go ahead and apply the modifier and I'm gonna move this out to layer 4 as well Yeah, see how round that is. That'll work. And I'm gonna go ahead and add the loop cuts here. I'm gonna actually remove <coughs> remove these outer vertices on that side. And I'm gonna actually add a mirror modifier. I had to clear the rotation and scale on that because <clears throat> when I was positioning it, I wasn't doing it in edit mode, so it altered the uh, rotation and scale of the image there. So now we can go ahead and work with this cage uh, with the loop cut and just pull that out and give you a little sharp corner there. Slide that back a bit. Now I want to like put like a uh, say this inner part I'll make it a little more detailed than that um, and you can do the same functions with uh, the modifier on as you would uh, anything else so I'm going to extrude that loop and then scale it down here and let's say I'll extrude it but I'll bring it bring it in 
Now that's kind of ugly. <clears throat> but we can just clean that up again with uh, some more loop cuts. Loop cut on. Should take that shading off so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. And just bring it down close to the outer edge. And then we'll do another one. Bring it down towards that bottom. And you can see it sharpened it up quite a bit. Now I'll put a smooth. And I'm going to actually, whoops, layer three. There we go. I'm going to increase the subdivisions on that. Could probably go one more, but you don't need to while you're working on it. So yeah, the three really gives it a good, good shape. And I'll let you see what's going on here. I'm going to move this loop out. Yeah, it's still selected, so I'm going to actually just um, hit edge slide so you can see the difference um, of what that loop cut does. Whoops, undo that. If I bring it down as far as it goes to that back edge, it's, it gives you you know the good sharp corner, but it's still a little rounded there, so you're not getting those hard angles on everything, and you can soften a lot of stuff up um, like this. Uh, it's kind of like using like the bevel tool. Um, but in this case, you know, we could make a fairly complex object, you know, using this base cage here. I'm going to select that um, back loop again, uh, that last inside face, and we'll go ahead and like extrude that and scale it down. And then I'll extrude it and bring it out here. And then again, you know, loop cuts. Loop cuts is basically <laughs> what you're going to be doing with uh, the subdivision surface when you're making any um, industrial type stuff, you know, machinery stuff like that. Um, but with uh, like organic models, say if we were to take this face here, I'm going to turn off that mirror modifier for the moment. If we were to extrude this face out, then I extrude it again, just rotate a little bit, just move it over, so you can make some pretty organic shapes uh, using just a cube, basically. Um, and then you'd have, you know, some goof, something goofy, you know, a handle or something. To undo all that, I'll turn that back on. Um, and now, and when you're done with like all your detailing, and you go to apply the modifier, you can see you have a lot of um, polygons there now. We're up to where are we at 9100, and you can get rid of a lot of these because they're not affecting the um, like the curved surface on here. They're all just along this flat surface and they can be um, removed actually so so you just you know delete uh, all these edge loops <clears throat> and we'll see what we come up with with a count after that and I'll just do this one but I'll leave the next I'll leave these here around there and like inside here you could get rid of um, like these and all of these along in here and um, you see already we're down to 7900 so you can really reduce the uh, poly count of something with a fair amount of detail by just getting rid of um, basically loops that you don't need along like flat flat surfaces unless you were to say want to um, say if you wanted like say you want to add some uh, a detail I actually make an edge split on there now you know if you wanted to add detail and whatnot you'd want to leave some loops and the only thing cool thing with that if you remove a bunch and you need some more you can just add them so 
usually I want to like keep an eye on um, how much how much detail do you have and how much uh, geometry do you have and where can you um, get rid of you know some of it. It's like all of these can be gone, all of these along here can go, and now it's going to save you know quite a bit. You could probably bring it down 4,500 possibly. Um, just by doing something like that and that still leaves you with a you know nice detail model you know nice round edges and everything let's we'll see what that looks like with the whoops with the landing gear here so that's uh, the basics of the um, subdivision surface modifier it's something I still don't understand completely <coughs> Oh, I wanted to go over a couple settings with it though. Let me just add one to um, that cube there. Um, this is the algorithm name that rounds and subdivides uh, the object. Uh, if you were to select simple, uh, you can see it doesn't do anything um, except in the the resulting wireframe when you apply the modifier will be determined um, by that. So it's a lot like using um, the W to bring up the sub, you know, the specials menu and then subdivide, you know, where you'd subdivide, you know, multiple times. It's the same thing. Um, works the same way. It just you don't have to keep hitting W to do a bunch of subdivisions, but you don't have to because you can actually add a number of cuts right there when you press W. That's just an, another way of doing it, really. Um, and the subdivide UVs we're not going to go over until um, maybe a possible later time. And the optimal display it just just does that. It it um, cuts it down to its its bare essentials, basically, um, to remove any extra edges, just for uh, visualization purposes, basically. I'll add a link to the uh, Blender wiki that uh, explains um, the subdivision surface modifier um, much better than I ever could. Um, so that's uh, it for that for now, and then I will possibly, after I detail this up here, um, we'll go over maybe a possible simple rig for the landing gear and the um, the landing ramp. Uh, on the back side of the ship as well. So, and that's uh, it for that. So, thanks for watching.